Hello, friends. We're here for our second reflection for Advent, a little reflection on John the Baptist, a guy who lived as crazy as he looked. In this Sunday's gospel, we hear Jesus to tell his disciples to be on watch. In next Sunday's gospel, we hear about the first watchman for Christ, John the Baptist. John was a historical figure. His existence, his preaching, his death, were all confirmed by non-Christian historical sources. John was the forerunner for Christ, announcing the coming of one greater. And he did so from the womb. Remember, he leapt when Elizabeth met Mary. His birth was foretold in scripture, and John himself has always had a special purpose, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. He even had his own disciples. Jesus declared that there was no one greater than John the Baptist, Truly I tell you, among those born of women has not arisen anyone greater than John the Baptist. I often think of St. Paul or St. Peter as the greatest, but no, Jesus says it was John the Baptist. And yet John the Baptist is not the Apostle John. He was the greatest, and he was never an apostle. John was part of the plan of salvation for all mankind from before his conception, though. And next week we'll hear it. Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. It's John the Baptist who prepares the way for Christ. Maybe in the New Testament, there are really three conceptions that matter. Mary's, John's, and Jesus's. Mary mothers our Lord, and cousin John the Baptist announces him. Now John took a Nazarite vow, and Nazarites were people who lived apart from society to become holier, the forerunners of hermits and monks. When people took a Nazarite vow, they typically did it for a short time, maybe a hundred days. But John was a Nazarite from birth and for all his life, like Samson and Samuel. He had a very clear idea of his purpose. And maybe that's what happens when you meet Jesus before you're even born. But his whole mission was to call people to repent to come forward and be baptized with water and to go out of that water with a different purpose, to prepare the way of the Lord, to make straight his paths. But John told all the people that he baptized that his baptism wasn't the baptism. John said, I baptize with water, but another will baptize you with fire and the Holy Spirit. John called people to repent and go away a different person. This guy was a bit of a different person, wasn't he? Clothed in camel hair, eating bugs and honey, living in the desert. Honestly, this is the thing that bothers me the most about John the Baptist. He's basically a pit preacher. He's the kind of guy that we're all expected to ignore, to discount as crazy. The thing that I wrestle with about John the Baptist is that I live a pretty mainstream, comfortable life, and he lives an incredibly radical life from start to end. So when he yells at me to make straight my path, and he calls me to repent for my sins, I listen. But because he's in the gospel, I listen to him because he's in the gospel, not because he's a crazy pit preacher on the street. And then I go back to my comfortable mainstream life. Because let's be honest, I'm not going off into the desert. I'm not going to put on a hair shirt. If I find a bug in my house, it's not going to be dinner. I'm going to flush it down the toilet. These radical figures in the gospel and among the saints represent a huge challenge for me. Because they remind me over and over again that Jesus calls me away from my comfortable life. They remind me that it's not enough for me to give money to charity. It's not enough for me to help out at church. It's not enough for me to baptize my kids and raise them in the faith. It's not even enough for me to get ordained, put on some fancy dresses at mass. No, the Holy Spirit is always calling me to go deeper. No matter what I do, he calls me deeper still. And it's out in the very, very deep water that I see people like John the Baptist. The deeper I go into the water and friends, I am assuredly not even ankle deep yet, but the deeper I go, 
the more I understand that I need the crazy, bug-eating John the Baptist types to prod me to take that next step. I am sure I'm not going to stop and listen to a sidewalk preacher. But I do look at saints and other people differently when I start to filter my life through the lens of guys like John the Baptist. I'm not going to start eating bugs. But maybe I'll find a little bit more wisdom in the rule of St. Benedict. Or maybe I'll get a little bit of inspiration that I wouldn't have seen when I've traced the footsteps of St. Kevin, who left the hermitage to live on the side of a cliff. Because friends, I want to follow where the Holy Spirit leads me, out into that deep water, towards the things that seem crazy and hard, the things that change your life. That's where I find myself today, friends. As many of you know, my wife and I welcome two refugee foster kids from Afghanistan this September. Because for us, that was the deep water spot that the Holy Spirit called us to. And it's life-changing in so many ways. And now, I can see that guy in the camel hair jacket a little clearer. So... As we start this new liturgical year, as we think about where we go from here, about the progress or lack of progress we might have made in the past, I encourage you to go deeper into the water yourself, to follow the man who eats bugs, to make your paths as straight as you can to the next place that the Holy Spirit intends for you to go. Because the only way for us to become saints is to follow Jesus. So let's let John the Baptist point us in the right direction. May this Advent be a blessing for you as you prepare for Jesus, the one who is mightier than we can imagine, and the one who is present in our everyday lives now and forever. May God bless you and keep you during this holy season.